Continuing on with stability and balance, we're going to look at the factors that can affect balance. We have the visual, so using our eyes and visual cues, your vestibular system, which is in your ears, and your somatosensory. So where do you know where your body is in, in space, and are you using your muscular system to kind of um, direct your body parts to maintain balance or stability? So an, another concept that we'll bring up, and which I mentioned earlier, was center of pressure. And so center of pressure, I like to think of the center of pressure as chasing your center of gravity and pushing it back into your base of support. So again, if you stand up and lean forward, you can feel the center of pressure move towards your anteriorly, towards your toes. If you shift backwards, the center of pressure, you'll feel it on your heels. Uh, and so you can see here, if you're standing on a force plate, the center of pressure just looks like spaghetti all over the place, but it's not deviating too far, right? This is 10 millimeters. Um, this is a good measure of stability. If our center of pressure as we're standing still goes, say, from plus and minus 10 millimeter excursion to plus and minus 100 millimeters of excursion, that you might um, surmise that that person is less stable. Here's a nice graph of the center of press pressure chasing the center of gravity, right? So on the y-axis, we have a uh, distance plus and minus 100 millimeters again. Um, and then we have along the x is time. So the dark line is the center of pressure. The dotted line is the center of gravity. So as you're standing stationary, they're pretty much the same. And then if you start to... Um, see a change in your center of gravity. You can see it, it deviated just ever so slightly here. The center of pressure goes out and kind of brings it back towards baseline. The same thing if your center of gravity starts to shift uh, towards a different direction, then your center of pressure will go out and kind of push it back to into a stable position. All right, so let's look at some ways to maintain balance. And we'll review the ankle strategy, hip strategy, a combination, and then the step strategy. Ankle, hip, and combo are static, right? You're, you're not moving. And step is like a dynamic way to, to um, deal with balance. So the ankle strategy, and I have a, a uh, um, reference here if you'd like to look it up. This is where I got the image. Um, so this ankle strategy, again, you, if you're standing up, you can sway forward and backward, and you are using that ankle strategy. It's for slow, low amplitude perturbations, um, maybe a nice gentle stop as you're coming into a station on, on the BART or the subway train. And we can see here we have EMG for gastrocnemius and tibialis anterior, so ankle uh, plantar flexors and dorsiflexors, hamstrings and quads, so at the knee, extensors, flexors, and your paraspinals or your rectus spinal, spinae, and your abdominals for near the hip. The quads and hamstrings obviously can affect your hip as well because of the rectus femoris of your quadriceps and your hamstrings are hip extensors. But as you go forward, you will engage your gastrocnemius, which is trying to pull you back into plantar flexor, right? A forward sway, you're going into a bit more of dorsiflexion. Um, that will be followed by your hamstrings, also pulling you in a posterior di um, direction and your erector spinae. If you do a backward sway, where you're going into more plantar flexion, you will see your tib anterior be engaged, followed by your quads and then your abdominals. And this, this just kind of keeps you um, gently swaying, but not falling over. The hip strategy is more for fast or large amplitude perturbations. Somebody bumps into you or a, a sudden stop on a train. 
So you can see the proximal muscles activate first and they produce large rapid motions at the hip. Um, so you can see if you're going forward, you're going to have your um, abdominals followed by your uh, quadriceps, which are, are trying to flex your hip, right? So if, if you're swaying forward very abruptly, you're going to try to um, quote unquote hinge at your hip. So you're kind of redistributing your upper body to kind of regain that balance. Likewise, if you're going into backward sway, you would get your hamstrings uh, muscles to go into hip extension and your erector spinae muscles. So you're kind of jerking back and almost kind of like pushing your, uh, your lower body or your hip region forward to kind of maintain your body over that base of support. So again, these are for large, um, abrupt perturbations. Then we would go into if it was a super large perturbation and you were being pushed forward, you might try the ankle strategy and then you would probably take a step, right? If you're going to, if you're flexing at the hips, I'm sorry, the hip strategy, I mean, for a large perturbation, if you're flexing at the hips and you're not going to maintain your balance, you will take a step forward. Many of us have probably had that instance where you're using the hip strategy and for a brief second, you think, I may not be able to use the step strategy. Um, if you can't use a step strategy and the hip strategy fails, you will fall. Um, and sometimes you take staggered steps and then regain your balance without falling. Um, another thing to think about when we're talking about balance is basically walking is controlled falling, right? So on the left hand side, we're statically standing and our base of support is sitting right in between our feet. When we are walking, that base of support um, leaves the, especially in single stance, it leaves um, the base of support. It's outside of your base of support. And then you follow by the, the subsequent heel strike, which keeps your balance. So it's a series of controlled falling as is walking as well. Another concept that affects your stability is the height of your center of gravity. If somebody's coming at you to push you over, if you lower your center of gravity, flexing at the hip, knee, and ankles, you will become more stable, right? In martial arts, sometimes uh, some uh, systems have the horse stance where you're lowering your body towards the ground in a very stable position. Um, I, I have the example here, but in class we talked about paddle boarding, right? You don't just walk onto the paddle board, um, and the stand up paddle board, I mean, and just start rowing away. Usually you might lay down on the paddle board and get used to it. You might get on, sit on it. You might get on your knees and then eventually stand up as you are better able to balance. If you feel like that paddleboard is going to capsize, you may drop down onto your knees to maintain balance. The other thing that can affect stability is the mass of the object. The larger the mass, the larger the inertia, as we talked about weeks ago, and you would need a larger force to move that object based on Newton's second law. So basically, if you are in a situation where you needed to increase your stability, um, say sumo wrestling, etc., you may want to increase your mass as well.